that states normally encode it as a value or a number. If it's one hot, it's a big value. It's only one thing at all. That's fine. So the way that we tend to build that is we have them always in star block. Now, if you think about a state machine, I have a state, I have mystery logic, and I have a next state. Or just sleep and try not to store. We also have some additional stuff, which I will just call support. And the support also may have stuff that comes from the mystery logic and goes into here. These could be things like counters, counting the number of nibbles that we need to bring in, or something like that, okay? So then there's a bunch of inputs that come into this thing, into the mystery logic, and there's some stuff that comes out directly. Okay? And depending on whether inputs go directly to the output, we're either Mr. Mealy or Mr. Moore. My state machines have both, so I just call them state machines. Okay? Now, we have some problems, because the way we normally write this is, we have our beginning, and will be someplace, is that we basically here have a case statement. We case on state. Okay? And then if I just have numerical values, and these are begin in, these might be what they are. And then I put the stuff in here for states. What outputs am I setting? What do I look at to decide to go to the next state and so on? Okay? Now there's a couple of batches here. If every single output isn't set in every single state, Synopsis makes a latch. And you know, this thing is going to get pretty big. Mine's like 200 lines long. And if I have to put every output, because a lot of them only happen once. So what I normally do is, up here, I put defaults. So, my first default is, the next state is equal to the state. Now, I don't have to say, stay in this state ever, anywhere else in my code. Why? I've said, the next state is this one. Later on, I can say the next state goes to number five. But right now, I only have to say when the state changes. It can make that simple coding style thing, okay? I have some controls, like increment counter. It's an output. It goes to another block with a counter, right? What I can do is in here, I'll say increment count. It's equal to zero. Now, I just have to come down to a one state that increments a counter and say increment count is equal to one. And the synthesizer is now smart enough to figure out it's zero unless this case occurs and build the correct logic. So what you want to do is you want to think if anything goes into a flip flop, why not make two signals, two regs? One is the flip-flop output, and one is what goes into the flip-flop. And so, if I have a counter, guess what? Next counter is equal to counter. So, why did I do that? Let me get my semicolon to over here. Now, someplace, I've got the always at pause edge. A clock, I think we're positive this semester. Last semester I put us on neg edge and half the class died. So this semester we're pause edge again. Because every other assignment had been negative edge, right? Or positive edge, rather. Okay, begin. And I probably will have a reset on this, but I'm not going to do that right now. Then what I'm going to say is 
really simple. Next or state gets pound one. Do not leave out your whole time or very long will bite you. Next state. So what we're doing, first of all, is we're separating all of the functional logic from the flip-flops. There's one reason to do that. In three the size of a barrel log, you may not have two always blocks drive the same signal. All the driving of a signal must happen in one always block. So the whole fake machine ends up in one always block. Okay? Second thing that I do is, some people like to put all the state forming logic in a giant case statement over here. Now everything in there is in a flip-flop. I want some signals to come out right now. Others, I want to go through flip-flops. So, the ones that come out right now get driven from here. The stuff in flip-flops, by having stayed in next state, that helps me remember this is really going to happen in the next cycle. I don't see it now. And that's a good thing to keep track of. It's really hard for students who are doing debugs and a control comes out a cycle later than they expect. Because it got more through flip flops. So consciously force them through flip flops. If you set the defaults for everything, I got like 40 lines of this stuff in mind because I got a lot of signals and controls. If I set all of the defaults up, I never make a latch. Because I've said what should happen. Sometimes I'm setting something to what it was, okay, and then it has to be in a flip-flop, and I'm using a next model for most of mine. Some people do underscore D or something to say that's the input to the flip-flop. Whatever works in your coding style. In what and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop a discipline for debug as well. It says, when I get the synthesis, I won't get 500 errors. Okay, do I know what things are in flip-flops and which ones aren't? Some companies actually put FF in front of the name of everything that's going to be a flip-flop. Okay, and then they put FD for the D in front of the flip-flop, whatever style you use. Why do they do that? So when they look at the code, they know what they're doing. Because sometimes increment count might happen this block. Because I got another always block that does the counter. He looks at increment count. Increment count, if it goes through a flip flop, will happen a cycle later. And that means I need to be aware that it doesn't happen until another state when I can test it. Okay? So, one of the other things that I like to tell people is put in a default state. So, I like to go into my code and know it doesn't synthesize. I comment it out default. And then dollar display some you lose message, okay? One of the things that drives students nuts is there's no default in. And you get this obscure warning message that blows by that you never see. Because I have my you lose message and then a dollar finish right here. And I just comment that out for purposes. Okay, so that if I end up creating a bogus state or I don't complete one of my beginning blocks, this thing catches it. And it tells you something. You're not where you expect to be. Because quite often we'll go over the writing code. And we'll say, this is going to be state 25. We might even give it a name and have a bunch of branch assignments up at the top. Makes it more readable. And then what happens is, we haven't written that code yet. And we reach a point where our design jumps there. And then it goes crazy. And we don't know what it's doing. And you waste a huge amount of debug time. But if you just put out the, this state doesn't exist yet, and you know what you can do? Print out in the dollar display the state. And you go, oh yeah, we didn't write 22 yet. That was supposed to take care of this. Go find it, put it in. Okay? So it's really helpful to put some traps in 
and put down defaults that catch things. In synthesis, we often will say if the default go back to the base reset state or something. That's kind of a safety valve, but it can be really hard to debug because you'll just start over and then that other transaction was lost. Didn't get processed properly. Okay, so that was one thing. The other thing, and I've shown this to a couple of students, I showed the whole class. Remember in our FIFO, we had a read pointer and we had a write pointer. You can do a class of FIFO that has a third pointer, which I call the whole pointer. And the idea is that empty is read equal hold. So I can go along pushing stuff in the right pointer, but the whole pointer starts out equal to the right pointer. And then if the package good, what do I do? If the packet is good, I set the whole pointer up to the right pointer, and now that packet flows out. If the packet's bad, I'm going to throw it away. I had a bad CRC, the address was wrong, whatever. Then I set the right pointer the whole pointer, and I just threw that packet away. No data went out. The problem is, if I come along moving the right pointer, well, the engine's going to take the read pointer and send packets out of the interface that shouldn't go out. So you can add this third whole pointer into a FIFO design, and now you have a single, I have in my design I call them flush and release. So flush moves the right pointer back to the whole pointer. It says, all the crap you just pushed, get rid of it. We don't actually change the data, we just move the pointer back. And now it's as though we never did any pushes. And then when we say it was good, release says, move the, the, head po the whole pointer up to the right pointer. This works in circular mode just as well. And now life is good. So what I normally do 